Hey everybody, I hope everyone's doing great. I am Larice, this is Justin, and we are here to talk about Evil Season 3, Episode 4, The Demon of the Road. Don't get off the road, stay on the road. <laughs> this, this one was satisfying and also scared me a little bit. <laughs> it was scary. It was definitely scary. But it just had a little bit of campiness to it also because when we actually got into the scary parts, it, as usual, the show can get campy. And when the campiness came out, I kind of saw the Scooby-Doo thing happening, which I told Justin <laughs> was, he said, when did we have a Scooby-Doo moment before? I said, when we had, uh, what's his name? Wandering Jack was his name? Same type yes, of thing. It was like uh, all pranksters. Yeah. So, but we'll get, we're going to start. So, hey, John and Vera, welcome back. It reminded me of SCP-745. I'm not quite sure what, what is that? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Please I don't know what explain. that is. Please tell us what that <laughs> is. But, yeah, I thought I liked it. I didn't think there was really a moment where you, you were saying that there's not a lot of filler this season. That's great. It's they're they're really hitting the ground running. They're putting their money where their mouths are. They're putting everything they have into the grips, and it's just like, oh my god! When you really when you really get into the meat and potatoes of it, it's like all of it is just action packed from start to finish. Yeah, there's a <laughs> lot going on. There isn't anything where it's like, well, we're just gonna leave this pillar of salt and not explain anything. At least if they <laughs> don't explain something, at least they are willing to admit where they tell you that they're not explaining it. Mm. It's a little bit more clear. It's very, very yeah. tight, tight writing this season. Yeah. I mean, I think they have, and I don't know this, I, I can't confirm it obviously, but I think they might have uh, some new writers in the writer's room. Oh, that's great. You know what? It's always good to get a little bit of a fresh take. That definitely mm. helps. Oh, Vera's eating chips and salsa. Nice. I had, they're not sponsored, but I had these things right before. <laughs> I'm stuffing my face. And this week, um, we don't have any audio or video issues, so we won't be like lagging behind. Hibs for Press said there were less episodes this season than there were the first two seasons. Were there? Uh, no. No, it no, was the weren't. same. Um, yeah, this season is going to be the same as last season, and that's 13 episodes across the board, uh, 55 minutes. Uh, so, so. Oh, okay. So SCP-745 is described as a bipedal nocturnal predator with a head made of clear bioluminescent skin that emits light that resembles that of a car headlight. It follows cars on lonely highways. I was thinking it looked, and I've said this before, some of their creatures look like Mothman with the red eyes because they like to really do the red eyes thing. So, and literally the Mothman was a creature that was flying. I mean, people described being in the car and seeing mm. these red eyes. So when I saw that, it it reminded me of that. But then also a couple of people had mentioned it was, yeah, Chesa cheeses are yummy. I had mentioned it was the Jersey Devil. Um, um I for for one, when they were first um uh, on the road, I didn't I'm I'm farsighted and it's easier for me to see things when they're far away. Um, but I did not see the drone. No, I didn't when see they it either. Were first yeah i had to go back because she said she saw it and i said what did she see i i had to go back twice to see what she was seeing and because it was in so distant it was so small mm -hmm. and then i paused it and i saw I, it yeah it, it took me a couple of watches to see it uh and the member that said that this season is only 10 episodes um i now can confirm that uh not only because i just Googled it because I did. It's only 10 um, episodes? Yes. Uh, 
they're trying to bring it in line with their other series is like Star Trek Discovery and Strange New Worlds and the other uh, big name shows. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that stinks. Things yeah. we're almost halfway through. So they're going to have to wrap it up. Yeah. And wrap it up quicker than they normally would. Okay. Well, then they don't have time for filler episode. Mm-hmm. Stuff, yeah, the radio stuff was creepy. Not, we'll get not like the that. zombie episode from last season. <laughs> that whole thing was pointless because there weren't any zombies. I guess it was just to show they had neighbors that seemed to have just disappeared <laughs> off the face of the planet. I feel like those neighbors exist only in an alternate universe. <laughs> I don't know, and and as you as we we can touch on in the episode, you know, they're expanding out. And they're they're adding on to their house. Well, they're yeah. adding in the direction of where the neighbors are supposed to be. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, what happened to the neighbors? <laughs> they're dead. The, the neighbors are they're, dead. The, the neighbors are dead. Okay. I didn't know. Well, I mean, it could be that or there's just gonna be a continuity issue that they're gonna ignore, which is fine. It's absolutely fine. X Files <laughs> has a lot of X Files had a lot of continuity episodes. Uh, of situations past and it was fine the zombie amazon was a low point of uh, amazon and <laughs> it was low point so starting at the beginning since we have um we can start at the beginning we have sister andrea being visited by these guys these guys we know him he's from brooklyn <laughs> he, i forgot his name though yes I didn't write down uh, his I'm name. Not even gonna, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. It, so. it was a very long name that was a little bit, it was very specific, but it was kind of hard to pronounce. But yeah, he's he, he was in the episode with the UFO. So this guy's a little sketchy. I'm not quite sure what his deal is, but we have seen him before. Why is everybody at the church seem, seeming to do Leland's bidding with the whole Andrea thing and just believing his account? Because he's giving them money, big chunks of money. Where he gets all of his money from, we don't know. Was it a Greek name? It might be. Although Greek is uh, Orthodox, not Catholic. So unless it was a Greek Catholic, unless he converted, because Greek is an Orthodox church. But it might be. He might be a Greek Catholic. Money. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Because what bugs me is that they're all there to recommend she retire. And Leland is just there. Of course, he's got a demon with him. Is that supposed uh, to be I, George? I thought it was supposed to be George, but um, no. Uh, George has a different facial um, structure than this demon right here. Uh, and George also has different fingers than this demon. Um, but on social media, uh, this actor had posted that he was hanging with George, but it's just a joke is this is the same actor that played that demon. Okay, so it's the same actor. That's cool. Yes. Okay, great. Well, I love how... Sister Andrea, when they said, we'll sign this and you can go to go upstate and retire. And, and so she just said, no, what are you going to give me? What are you going to give me if I retire, though? That's what I want to know. Like, what, what what are the non benefits of retirement? I guess you just live on a retreat and sit around and watch the birds. And I don't know, maybe make some of that beer stuff or whatever. I don't who knows what they do. <laughs> <laughs> what do they do? But she just says no. And it was funny because I, I don't know if they're used to hearing the person like a nun saying, no, nope, I'm not. I think they're, I think the main reason they wanted to retire, though, I don't think it has anything to do with her mental state or what Leland said. I think they just don't like a nun who is uh, independent and pushes back against the absurd things that they do. I agree. She's in there meddling with stuff and maybe perhaps... Zero, 
interrupting Vera, whatever your agenda the, is. Vera, Go ahead. Why are you in the chat talking about pubic hair? Bot flies. <laughs> I didn't see the pubic hair. <laughs> George doesn't have pubic hair. Oh, because I think in the picture it showed their his whole body in the behind the scenes picture, maybe. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know. Right. Maybe demons don't have pubic hair, or maybe they just go and get Brazilians. I don't know. <laughs> Brazilian waxes. So it's the same actor that plays almost all the different demons. That's what I thought. The same actor that played. Mm. Uh, oh yes, that's right. And it's and if they go there, they're if. Sister Andrea goes up there, she'll get the bot fly. We don't want that. No, I don't want anything to happen to her. I love her. No. And she says there's a demon behind Leland, and you know, we see that that thing. Mm. <laughs> what I it's funny is like, is there a demon here right now? She is not. Yep. Right there. <laughs> And she is not ashamed or scared in any way to tell them about it either. Oh, Vera said, no, I'm a weirdo. George doesn't have pubic hairs. <laughs> Sister Andrea, uh, Sister Andrea made accusations about an important person in the church. That's right, the cardinal. We learn later on. She mentioned that the cardinal, we find out later on. You know, yeah. I, I have fireworks going off in my neighborhood. Anyways. So, uh, I don't hear it. Yeah, <laughs> okay, if you hear any boom, 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 that's the fireworks. The Cardinal, <laughs> that's right. She she said, but did she say that? Or did Mr. Mr. Boggs or Dr. Boggs make that up? Dr. Boggs uh, said that, but I don't think he was making it up. That man is too ethically bound to make that's something like that. That's what I thought. I thought, why would he say that? Why would he lie? I think she must have said something about that. Some people thought that he yeah. made it up, but <laughs> I think he actually said that she indeed did, or maybe she did tell him the Cardinal has a demon next to him. And that's what they consider to be blasphemous. And that's why they think she has mental instability or some uh, crap. And it doesn't make any sense because they're they have a division of the church with David, and they have Kristen, and they have Ben. They're all on the payroll, dedicated mm -hmm. to investigating this. So you'd think they'd want to know if there was some type of demonic possession happening to one of their own. Well, to be honest, I think they said it in season one. The only reason that they gave David the weird assignment was because they, he was a black guy studying to be a priest. Mm. And they, they wanted the black guy out in the world talking about the Catholic Church. Uh, they, they, were, uh, they said that in season one. So I don't know if that still holds true today now that he's a priest and everything, but right. it could still be true. Well, we then cut to, well, eventually, right before they get to the scene with the woman that's making the confession, they said that she had to be evaluated by a psychiatrist, and then later on we find out it's Dr. Boggs. But then it cuts to David in a confession, and then there's a woman there that said she knew, she, she specifically wasn't there to confess. She was going there because she has this case. And before we get to Kristen and the girls, uh, the word must be getting out about what they do there at the Catholic Church, that they have this division that investigates paranormal. They have their own little X-Files division of the Catholic Church because she yeah, because, specifically uh, went there for him with her case. And in, 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 in the last episode, um, remember that couple that we um, talked about? Uh, I, yeah, I won't get into all that, but uh, they had mentioned that her mom told them about David and what he does. Oh, okay. All right. That makes sense. So, but why are they putting the word out about this though? That's, I don't, I don't get that. 
I'm not sure, but word must be going around. Maybe people hear from other people, you know, church or churches are notorious for having a lot of gossip. So perhaps people learn, you hear through the grapevine, you hear from one person through another person. Well, go to this guy. He does exorcisms. This guy's mm -hmm. because, you know, they, they actually do have that in, in churches. So. Oh no, dogs and fire. Uh, I love bad. the I love the chat activity that we have here tonight. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> the church doesn't want anyone to know about anything corrupt too close to home. Well, I know, but do you think they'd want to try and fix their problem from within instead of letting it get out of control and wait for more destructive? Mm -hmm. issues like if there's a cardinal that's being influenced by demons they want to wait you for think the they would want to know destruction? right yeah 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 but, yeah but if they're afraid that sister andrea is going to expose it before they get a chance to take care of it or maybe they're all just under demons we don't know the whole thing uh, is and i bit. just want i just want to say really quick that if you see me have a jolt on my side here, like I'm all like it's a fireworks going on the other side of my um, house here, and so like it scares me. <laughs> the fireworks? Yeah, so that's why I'm jumping in my seat. Oh, you got fireworks too? Great, everyone's got fireworks yes. tonight. And it's not even the fourth yet. No, it's not. But a lot of people are doing them tonight because some people have to work tomorrow because it's a Monday. But anyways, uh. This show, John W., for me, this show still gives us more questions and answers and just drops some of them. Yeah, I agree. To be fair to the creators, though, they do that with all their shows. They did it with The Good Wife and The Good Fight and all of their others that came before them. Um, so this doesn't uh, surprise me whenever they do that. But you're, you're left wondering, where did that go and why didn't we see its conclusion? Uh, but I think they hope that people will just simply forget that they can open that door. Yes. Yes. And the entity is there for that type of work. Yes. The friends of the Vatican, they're cleaning things up. Bureaucrats are a different story. Okay. True. All right. So then we have the next scene, which was the girls came in and disappeared pretty quickly. Um, Christian's home with the girls. They're told her, they're, they're te they told their teacher that she was a demon hunter. And <laughs> there's someone at the door. And I didn't recognize him, but this is the guy that she smacked. <laughs> that dude. <laughs> I, that is a, uh, I, ma I made that gif of that slap. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So this guy just wants an apology. But how did he find out where they live, though? It's pretty easy to find out where someone lives. Oh, well, I live under the radar then. <laughs> yeah, the girls are, what I love is the girls are like, go punch him again. <laughs> the girls are, don't want any, anything to do with him. They hate him. <laughs> of course they and hate him. Not. They loved when, they loved when she smacked him. Yeah, they there. She goes to the door to talk to them, and they're there's so, oh, I went back too far. She goes to the door to talk to them, and they're screaming, punch him again. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, and you know, uh, he seems like an arrogant, pompous asshole. Yeah, well, I mean, that video went viral, so. He's probably embarrassed, but I love how they're just poking their heads out. <laughs> <laughs> Kick his ass. There's, yeah, there's Lila and Lynn and uh is that no, that's not Lexi. Which one's that next that, to that's Laura. Kristen's shoulder? Laura. Laura. Okay. <laughs> Laura. <laughs> Laura's poking her head out. Kick his ass. And then he starts filming her. I thought we were gonna have a Karen moment, like he was trying to get like a Karen melt meltdown video, right? I think that's mm -hmm. what he was trying to I get. Thought he, 
I thought he was going to serve her with lawsuit papers or something. Well, he could have had her arrested, technically, because that was assault. But that's not what he wanted. He just wanted to get her on film. I don't know. The whole thing is weird because, like, we never saw. <laughs> I don't know if he posted it or not. We never saw their actual exchange because it actually showed just the girls going upstairs. And yeah. I guess it was was it Lynn that went down and, and eavesdropped and heard a little bit and said, oh, she apologized. And they were all disappointed. They didn't like that at all. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm guessing that even if he did try to, you know, file charges and have her arrested, whatever, her friends in law enforcement would have squashed it and made it go away. Probably. He was probably too embarrassed to to do that. I mean, he probably didn't like being he probably didn't like being manhandled though. So No. Um, I think Hibs for press, I think the season's doing a better job connecting things. Entity Graceling. Yes, I, I agree. And the student who inherited the sigils, yes, we're gonna get to that later. The douchebag from the store, yes. Uh they are starting to connect things, which is nice. We're getting a little bit of payoff with some of that. But Lexi didn't like that one bit. She did not like that Kristen apologized. She no, was giving her the side it. eye. <laughs> her face. She's like, was and, it, and why, did you, why did you apologize? <laughs> in retrospect, Louise, I, I think you'll agree with me when I say that I, I think Lexi is right. I think that men do get away with far too much that they do. Yeah. I love it. She says, uh, how come boys can get away with whatever they do, but girls can't? And Krista just says, well, in his defense, I was wrong to hit him. But she disagreed. Yeah, I disagree, too. Uh, I disagree, too. I think I would have hit him harder this time, and I would have actually used something with a point. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I think <laughs> I probably would have just, honestly, if that happened, I probably would have just left the store. I probably would have just left the store. Uh, well, I'm given so the fact that I've never been... Go ahead. No, I'm not. I'm usually non-confrontational. Unless oh, it's something okay. that really is some, a big... Something that really matters. Like, that to me is trivial stuff. Cutting in line. Like, if, so, like if somebody said that to you and, or got in your face or something, I'm the type of guy to go up and put that guy in his place. I won't let him talk to you like that, Louise. <laughs> But if it's and if it's just me, I don't know if I would do what she did, but I would definitely do it in defense of someone else because I have done something like that before. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but we won't get into it right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. We don't want you to incriminate yourself on the live stream. <laughs> in the real world, she would be arrested and sued, potentially, depending on the person. Um. I would have put pressure on the cashiers to restore the order of the line. Curse was I feel bad about that because like the cashier, it's not their fault that the customers are being jerks. So I've had, I actually had some guy cut right in front of me a couple months ago when I was in line at a drugstore and I was waiting there for the cashier and the cashier shows up and he just walked right by me and I just stood there and I didn't do anything. I just gave him a stink eye. And he looked back at me and he seemed frightened just by my stink eye because I stood there and gave him the look of death. I just he turned to mm -hmm. me and was like, <laughs> I was like, I did one of those. <laughs> you don't want to be on the receiving end of my stink eye. It's not a nice one. But at the same time, I think it's not worth arguing with someone like that. And also that guy specifically, he is just a miserable person. I just feel bad for people like that. I feel like it's their there something's wrong with them. It's not me. So and I I have a theory as to why he wanted an apology. Okay. Uh I, I don't know if this if this will be well reciprocated uh to the audience currently watching, but I think you know as we said before he was embarrassed as you said Larice he was embarrassed and People probably, you know, recognized him and made fun of him on social media or whatever. But it, one thing that could have happened is that he probably had trouble um, getting dates and stuff like that and getting women to talk to him after being, he was a douchebag in that store. Yeah, maybe. 
Although there might be some women that felt bad for him, thinking, you know, you have this Karen that came up and hit you. <laughs> <laughs> let's be let's be honest. The guy was a schmuck. <laughs> the guy was the Karen. <laughs> But I once cut in line, John said I once cut in line in front of people, but it was a total accident as I was not paying attention. And there was a weird gap in the line. Once I realized, I apologize. No, that doesn't count as cutting in line. I've done that too before. When you realize and you think, oh, and someone goes, tap, tap, tap. The line starts over there. You're like, oh, I'm so sorry. Because you don't know. That's different. I mean, <laughs> the people just let me cut in lines because of my wheelchair. They don't want to correct me. So they just like let me do it. Yeah, if you're with someone on crutches too, I've noticed that will happen too. They'll, they'll they won't even the person in charge, whoever's in charge of like whatever it is, will come and get you and just pull you to the front. So that's a nice yeah. and um, that's a nice perk. One time, one time, I actually like people got mad at me because I refused to go ahead of them in in line. They got mad at you for that. Yes, because they were like, well, you should be at the front. I said, I don't want to be at the front. <laughs> that was, that was, that was, no, that was nice of you to refuse to be, get special treatment, but uh, once cut in line in front of people, oh, that was what you said. Oh, yeah, you learned this lesson from grade school when your classmate bought bus in front of, but in front of others, yeah, to get lied for food or recess. Some kids never learn. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> We get to True. the next scene. Uh, we get to the next scene. So David takes Kristen and Ben to this woman's house. She says her husband is up in the middle of the night saying, go away, stop following him. They think initially they think that he's sleepwalking. She says that's not the case. And I guess when she tried to wake him up, maybe he tried to hurt or hit him or hit her. And so mm -hmm. he started sleeping in his truck and he sleeps there now. Because he's worried for her safety. Because somehow he thinks he's possessed. Uh, yeah, I didn't really understand that. Um, because as we get into it, we learn that um, he wasn't possessed and there wasn't a figure that got in the truck. Like he thought there was. So well, I'm, I'm thinking I maybe because if he's been going along this route a lot, He's had a lot of exposure to that frequency and that frequency. I, before we started, I had Justin look it up on YouTube and play it. It definitely is hard to listen to if you have your headphones in and it, it can cause later on, it can cause hallucinations. It can cause anxiety. So if he was hallucinating, and thinking that he's possessed. And the mind is a powerful thing. Once you start believing you're something, you, your behavior can kind of fall into line to what you believe, especially if it's something that's based on fear. I mean, we need, we know fear is like the, the root of most evil in this world. It just causes you to act awful. And later, I'm going to listen to it with both headphones in and see what happens. <laughs> it. I'm going to tell you guys. So it is the 18 point. What was what was it called? 18. It was like 18. Uh, point something. Ooh, let me. I have I have let it me down. Look at the messenger. When 18, we get, when we, 18 point nine eight hertz. Yeah. So if you Google that on YouTube and you listen to it, it it literally sounds to me like a. It sounds to me, and I might sound different to other people. To me, it sounds like you're in the front of your car. And someone in the back seat rolls down the window, and your window is closed, and you get that little um, air pocket sound. That bu -bu 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 -bu. that's what it sounds like to me. I was like, "Oh, this is a real thing." So this guy, I, I, I they didn't <clears throat> flat out explain why he was or acting. That I guess you could say that all of the side effects or whatever the effects of hearing this frequency was causing him to behave this way. I guess you maybe could. it was maybe it was uh, because he says he travels through that route a lot. Yes. Maybe it was long term exposure. Yes. If he's a, if he was that's what I'm saying. If he was hearing it on a daily basis and that was his daily route, then yeah, it could be. But you you know what that guy needs to do is just like drive fast. <laughs> yeah. Well. 
when they leave, they they see this round thing on the fender, and they suspect this looks like a sigil. David took a picture of it. Yeah, and it matched up. And Bend is skeptical, skeptical, thinking, now you're just seeing sigils anywhere. I can see where that's happening. Of course, Ben has a new, has had his skepticism renewed by all that science, all those science people, the science club that he went to. And I do have to say that that was one thing that I did not feel fulfilled on uh, in this season. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because, because they never actually showed uh the uh, the angel in the video thing being debunked or any of the other stuff that they said was um, was fixed for him, they never showed us that. So right, they just mentioned what, in passing. What is it like a? Yeah, like it's a black hole of nothingness for us because we didn't get to see it. No, it happened off screen. Well, you know what? We, they didn't have time. They only had ten episodes, so they had to say, "Hey, this is what can happen." <laughs> This is what can happen. Well, I think it also kind of led into what was about to happen. Considering right when they're in the middle of having that conversation, you had this interference that was being manipulated by radio fr frequencies by this guy in a, in a garage. Um, his surprise, my main confusion was him, with him was his supposed blackouts and showing up 500 miles from where he was, uh, where he last had. Yeah, that thought that was quite extreme for this frequency whatever whatever they discovered yes they never explained why he actually uh you know zombified and and drove 500 miles away from where he was it could be that that frequency is really that powerful i mean maybe they the, the drone followed him all the way out they they were really messing with him that guy had toward the end we started to hear other uh sound bites on the radio frequencies mm -hmm. about freedoms and it was some political talking points i don't know if you heard that but it wasn't in the initial the initial sounds when they first heard it you heard I did. like yeah yes i did and i actually have that excerpt i would play it if i didn't think we'd get taken down <laughs> yeah it made me think about uh the trucker convoy a little bit because <laughs> I don't know if that was like a nod to it or if maybe this episode was happening before that was happening, but it made me think about that. But yeah, he blacked out for eight, for eight hours. Just, should we gently like blast the frequency over to those truckers and see what happens? The, yeah, you could blast the, the positive frequency. <laughs> yeah, but the positive frequency. The peace and tranquility, because there is a positive frequency. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's yes, a bad there is one. a little um, healing frequency and achievement frequency. There's all kinds of different frequencies you can listen to. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, go ahead, Vera it. says, "Do you hold on? Do you think we will get a signal for technology? Uh, whatever Ben is into, uh, I have yeah. no idea what that means. I don't I'm know what sure. that means. What does that mean?" This one they thought kind of looked like a technology frequency, but that'd be interesting. But I thought the sigils represented different houses that we learned at the end of this episode. Yes, yes. Um, but we also learned that um that not all of them still exist. Right. It's taken several centuries. They haven't eliminated that many considering they've been working on them for centuries i was kind of he said for centuries we've been able to take out these houses and it wasn't a lot i was like that's pretty sad you guys kind of suck at this <laughs> <laughs> john w this is a fun episode one of my top favorites there was the elevator oh the elevator game episode that one was scarier than this one that one was one of the scariest ones <laughs> i've ever seen the elevator my my favorite scene from that one was uh, you're not going, you're not going with us. And the, the guy stands up, he goes, I'll watch him. And she goes, everybody in. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. nether regions. That one always made me laugh because they wanted to go to the nether region. But I use that all the time when I watch Stranger Things. <laughs> 
But getting back to the sigil, uh, so Ben is skeptical. This looks like a, a circuitry diagram. And they go, eventually they go to visit. They're, they found a receipt and it, it led them to this diner to where the trucker had stopped off. So they go and eventually, after examining this, got back and forth, a little bit of debating whether or not this is a sigil or not. They eventually go to this diner and they meet up with the waitress that had written something on the receipt. I forgot what she wrote specifically. Said stay how have safe a safe or something trip. like that. Yeah, say stay. Yeah, there it was. Be careful, get home safe. Yeah, Tracy. But uh, but hey, so you can't. Everybody knows you write the same message to every single trucker that comes through that place. Like you can't write like some sort of personal thing, like for every single person. Like I, I want to put work in my messages, especially right. if I want you to, you know, get home safe. Yeah, but that explains that. She's obviously not involved, but it was weird because when they got up to leave and this other trucker overheard their conversation, I thought maybe he was somehow involved. He stopped and he, he was eavesdropping on their conversation. He, he heard whatever they mentioned in passing and said, no, don't go over there. <laughs> Exit 13. Um, but I... I hate the 13, but I also have to say that I don't think that the others were, could have been involved because they didn't look smart enough to have been involved in the freaking. Gosh, thing. damn, that's rough. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the guy that they eventually found didn't look like the. Anyways, I won't get into all of that. <laughs> um, <laughs> You'd be surprised. Looks can be deceiving. So, but she thought they were re reporters because they didn't look like truckers. But this man has overheard their conversation. And Christian thinks that this these truckers are the reason why they might be driving off the road is that they're exhausted and they start to maybe hallucinate a little bit just out of on their own, out, out of being alone on the road for so long. Uh, no because possession, that is but the, that is the. the that is the number one cause of death for truckers right. in America. Uh, exhaustion. Exactly. But he tells them don't go to exit 13. But obviously they're going to go. <laughs> they're going to go to exit 13. Now, exit 13A on I-95 in this part will take you to Elizabeth, New Jersey. Never go there. Never, ever, ever, ever go there. Not because of ghosts, because it smells like a butt. Exit 13 <laughs> and upstate New York. What? I think it's off of like news. Yeah, it smells like a butt. It smells like a ginormous butt. Um, exit 13 and upstate, I think it goes to like New Rochelle area. So this is not geographically accurate. <laughs> I just want to point that out. Um, yeah, that, that was because I went and looked that up specifically wondering where they were going. Because, you know, you do get on these roads upstate and it is scary. Especially if it's nighttime and there's no street lights and it starts to rain or get foggy, it's only trucks and you. It is scary as hell. Mm. So I could see anyone getting a little creeped out. It starts to feel like you're you're gonna if you stop and pull over, you're gonna be in a horror movie. It, they, they I thought they set the mood mood pretty well with that. Uh, and that's what that's a comment that Kristen made uh, to Ben later in the yes. episode, right when. He's about to get out of the car. Yes, yes. Yes, she said and it's like... Let me just say ever... that... Let me Go just ahead. say that she also takes the liberty of um, of dropping the F-bomb a lot in this episode. And she I does! love it. She kept saying it quite a bit. I noticed that too, and I kept laughing. She was like, holy F! <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Hipster Fred said that they've taken out six demon houses in 600 years. So they only take <laughs> the fight isn't going well. That's like one house every 100 years. Uh, John W said Tracy was a red herring. I first thought that Trucker was having an affair with Tracy and was using a uh, blackout as an excuse. Oh, I have a friend who's a trucker and he talks about highway hypnosis that can cause hallucination over time. I, I can. I can understand that. I've taken quite a few long road trips 
and mostly to the Midwest, but I've gone upstate and now, and I've gone all up and down the East coast, but going, once you start going West, it is very, very, very rural and scary. Um, I can't even explain it. You feel like you're going in like a Bermuda, Bermuda triangle. Once you start, if you're starting from on the East coast, you start going West parts of middle America, you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And it starts to look like, especially in Iowa, Mm-hmm. It starts to look like you're on a loop. Like you'll see the same tree like, and the same like light. There's a town, the same... <laughs> like, there, like there's a town that yeah, you can never leave almost. Yeah, it it, it really feels like there's a, a tree and then a cornfield and then a barn. And then another tree and then a cornfield and then a barn. And then another tree. It's like the same pattern over and over and over again. And because you're mm-hmm. going through different time zones, the times are changing too. And your whole sense is, it's its a weird feeling. I've done it a couple times. Thankfully, I've always had people I'm, with me. But the people that were with me always. experienced it too. They they felt, they're like, this is whole, yeah. we feel like we're stuck in a time loop right now. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's very weird. Time zones always confuse me though, like, the time zone with you, I always forget that you're an hour ahead of me. But whenever, um, whenever I travel uh, and I feel like I'm going through banjo country, <laughs> I'll um, text. I'll text my friends, and I'll go. This is my location. If I go missing, please find me. <laughs> oh gosh, I, I don't blame <laughs> you if you're by yourself. No, definitely do that. And if you lose reception and says no service, emergency calls only. It's never a good sign. Nope. <laughs> no, it's never not. a good sign. But I, I, I enjoyed when they started singing. I enjoyed their serenade with the turtle song. I enjoyed that part. I thought it was an interesting choice. <laughs> I thought it was fun. I thought, oh, yay, they're together because they weren't together for the last episode. And I think even before that, they were kind of split up in the episode before that. So and then Ben is back and he seems very happy. And Kristen mentioned something to Ben about him being a little bit happier. And he, I think he told her at this point he'd, he'd gone to the science club. And that's, he mentioned just, like you said, it was just a brief in passing that they they, they cracked, they solved the mystery of the mm-hmm. angel. <clears throat> but it seemed like everybody was having a wonderful time in this scene. It was just like, and it, it flowed, it flowed nicely, like that that point where you almost forget that the camera is rolling. Yeah. That, yeah this it, was that. Well, the three of them have so, such great chemistry mm-hmm. together. Yeah. And it makes sense because they were singing so happy together. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I thought it was a good choice. It was all great. Well, it was all fine and good until Ben just mentions in passing. Oh, we. I figured out. I just. <laughs> I solved the the mystery case of the angel, and then David doesn't seem too thrilled about it. Like, oh, what? What? Huh? There's no angel. <laughs> oh what? yeah, he was very upset by that. And Krista noticed that. She said, "Oh, you wanted it to be real," and he's like, "No, what I want." And then you hear the. You hear. <laughs> You hear the interruption. <laughs> you have a sound effect oh, for that. Um, oh yes, yes I do. Yes I do. Uh, I have. Which one is it? This one right here. Yes. Kind of what it sounded like. Yep. Pretty close. <laughs> it was a little <laughs> bit quiet. It was much louder. Oh, was it? Yeah. A little yeah. quiet. Yeah, they hear this scream all of a sudden. But it was very it was very cartoonish. So when I first heard that, I thought right away, I thought someone is pranking these guys. The sounds that we heard reminded me of going through a haunted house. Like haunted one of those really yeah, cheap haunted houses. The one part of this scene that is not possible and most certainly cannot happen is whoever's doing this cannot override your physical control on your console. That is not possible. You, I mean, they would have to hack your vehicle to do that. Well, that's what that's what Ben's sister later says. 
that they had that that they were doing they were hacking into his phone but they had to be close let- so it was the drone that was following them that was able to do that i mean i don't i don't really think it it was a like a uh, what is it a a hard vehicle attack because if it was a um he really did want to hurt them he, he could have made them crash or do something else you know and um i think he, it could have been a lot worse especially yeah. since the guy cut the power i think he cut the power i don't remember I don't know if that the guy actually cut the power or if it was an act that just was a coincidence that the car short sh- had a short at that moment. It would if that's a coincidence that was weird timing because they didn't explain that exactly. But it all happened and then he said his steering wheel couldn't even move. So I don't know. I I thought it was one big prank when I, when I heard about it. Like I said it sounded like a haunted house like not a real haunted house like a like a fake haunted house where you go in for halloween and a bunch of people just start being creepy and whispering in your ears and screaming and jumping up behind you um and it as soon as they looked back and they saw these red eyes i again i was thinking the mothman stories or jersey devil like there's a lot of similar type stories where these red eyes she said she saw it and i didn't see it wait oops i went back too far I, i did I did see uh, red lights, but nothing that would resemble eyes. Maybe they thought they were eyes. Like, if you're hearing that frequency, sorry, I went back too far. If you're hearing that frequency, you might start to hallucinate and it might look like eyes, but whatever it was, she thought that she saw it. And yeah, that's pretty creepy either way i mean even if it's just a drone following you like that you don't want a drone following you either who the heck is following you right i mean yeah i wouldn't want that either i mean i'm pretty sure i can outrun one if i wanted to with the right wheelchair but uh (laughs) it would it would be harder for them on turbo boost Yeah, there um, it was. But Just two lights back there. Hibs for Prez. Hibs for Prez says, I'm expecting too much from the waitress at the <laughs> diner. <laughs> with it, uh, um, old waitress, uh, dealing with at least a dozen customers working the same job, the same waitress. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's where we disagree, Hibs. But uh, yeah, I, I love you anyway. So. Uh, David doesn't argue loud enough or long enough for spiritual ex- explanations. Oh, sorry. I keep going back too far. <laughs> Larice. I don't know what's going on. We were at it's where okay. the lights no were. No, there was the drone. Hey, Kristen looks genuinely terrified uh, in this yeah. moment. Like she's about to crap her pants or something. <laughs> well, that wouldn't have been fun. That would have been very, <laughs> very embarrassing. It's, I would be pretty creeped out if I saw that. If I looked back there and I saw these red lights. I don't know. Okay, so the car did shut down, but right. we don't know if it was the dude that did it or if it was uh, yeah. just overloaded by everything that uh, was happening in the moment. Because, yeah, um, go ahead. <clears throat> no, that's the picture of her looking terrified. Definitely terrified. Mm. But she doesn't drop the f bomb until Ben <laughs> pumps on the hood of the car. <laughs> yeah, well, that was like a a little jump scare with Ben. <laughs> it's scary. And, so if they froze, and the I, I honestly, wheel. I honestly have to say that I watch TV, whether if it's a movie or shows or something. I always wear my noise canceling headphones so that I could get a more immersive experience. And it in in areas like this where I'm like, oh my god, something's about to happen. Like I scare myself to the point where when there's loud noise, I jump out of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, she says someone is effing with us. 
That's when she used the F-bomb. Someone is effing with us. I love that. I love when she said that. And he gets up to... She's really freaking out because he got out to check the... Like you said, she jumped. They both jump. He bangs on the hood of the car. <laughs> He's like, open the darn hood. <laughs> and then she goes off while they're looking. And I didn't see anything. Did you? Darn it! Why does this keep doing this? <laughs> It's yeah. Right. There we go. There we go. Okay. Did you see anything? I don't see anything. Uh, I did not. I watched it. Like I told you before we started the stream, <clears throat> I watched it four times uh, and I did not see anything. I don't know what she thought she saw, but she it saw? was probably, it was, uh, it obviously was enough to, um, to scare her, whatever she thought she saw. Yeah, right? Why would they put that in there and not explain it? Because she heard or saw something. She was definitely freaked out. Um, John W. says, I think they missed a great opportunity to make the episode really scary. Uh, lonely Dark Roads are nightmare fuel. They really are. Yes. Um, I, I think they... They utilized what they had for this episode in a way that was satisfying, but didn't turn turn you off. Like, it wasn't scary to where you didn't want to watch it. I agree. It was just scary enough. But it wasn't quite... It, there, were, there was the one jump scare... I thought I was pretty, we'll get to it. I was pretty creeped out by the scene later on when David comes back. That was, that was pretty scary. Um, mm -hmm. I, and it's still, it's not really explained. It's still unclear as to why Kristen was so freaked out by this. I mean, we've seen a lot. There she is looking freaked out again. She said, let's go back in the car. And she's still looking into the woods. And later they actually, when the car's pulling away, they show the woods again. So mm -hmm. I kept looking, thinking, like, maybe I might have missed something. But do you know <laughs> those moments, maybe, like, when you enter a dark room, whether if it's in your own house. Right. And all of a sudden you get this anxious spike right. in, in your adrenaline, and you're like, oh, my God, is something in here with me? Well, maybe it was those frequencies that were affecting her that, that might have been oh, affecting boy. her. Because they were using the frequency. And should I listen to it later with both headphones in, or should I talk myself out of it? With the oh, the the YouTube of the the frequency. Yeah, I only listened to about like ten seconds of it. And I had to turn it off. It was bugging me so much. It was. It's not. It's not a pleasant sound. I said that's okay. enough. I might just. Re I might just record it and listen to it tomorrow if I feel like. It. No, There's I don't like want you to talk to me. I'm <laughs> I'm There's sorry, a 10 my, hour my watch is trying to speak to me. Oh. <laughs> there's like a 10-hour video, or there's like a one-hour video where you can listen to it. I don't know who would sit there and listen to it, because that is not a nice thing to listen to. It's Like I said, it sounds like an air pocket in a car. Um, but Ben mentions there's like a GPS and radio waves that are being disruptive. And she, Kristen, again, once again, she says someone's trying to scare us. And then we get to the pop-up book. Man, that pop-up book was horrifying this time, right? But I know you don't like enough, it. But... En enough with the pop-up book, please. <laughs> and they got to 33. Hey, they got to like 20 X's ahead. But after that, they show the woods again. What the heck? I still don't understand that. What was going on? The de that is horrifying. That pop-up book was the scariest part of the episode. <laughs> I, I would have to agree, yeah. Um, and again, everyone knows that I'm not a fan of the pop-up book. I think having the pop-up book and the intro is just too much time. Ah! They need to cut that down. There it is. There it is. <laughs> That's a pop-up book. Yeah. I can't believe you got a screenshot of that, Larry. <laughs> why, why wouldn't I? That was pretty cool. <laughs> it was creepy. Uh, listening to the John said listening to the ghost frequency for an hour in the dark all alone. no no I won't do that no, go John, for it no, if you John, do that Justin uh -uh. 
Yeah, you gotta you gotta tell me if you do that. I am not. <laughs> no, I, I found it you know, like hard to even listen to for ten seconds. So no. You know, I, you know, I'm not easily scared, but there's no way I'm doing it in the pitch black room. No, sorry. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. So then we have uh, Sister Andrea talking with Mr. Bo- uh, Doctor Boggs, and he's been asked by the church, obviously, to evaluate her for this early onset what they're calling is early onset of dementia even though we know that's she's not really showing any signs of that it's just an excuse to get her out uh she requested him because he had seen a demon and come to her in the past even i think it was the last episode or the, the one before that and the last uh, episode said, yeah okay oh yeah. no the one yeah the one before that yeah yeah and she tells him something i forgot what she, she said something snarky to him about the demon that would uh, he would meet at his death. I can't remember what it was. Way back in the, the last episode, she said, "She said the day you die, God yes. will judge you, and you yes. will meet that demon." Yep. I'm like, oh my God, I love this woman. That was foreshadowing. So uh, he asks her if she's seeing these demons. She gets up. She looks around. <laughs> I love how she's like looking in different parts of the living room. <laughs> no, and there were cool. I didn't see any. Uh, We're cool. And then she explains about how she saw uh, a Saint Bernadette when she was 15 years old playing the piano and she found a specific chord that that prompted this this vision of Saint Bernadette and she would appear when she hit the chord she gave herself to Christ and Saint Bernadette was a French nun. I had to go and look this up. Uh, she was a French nun that lived oh, in the 1800s. No. Yeah, she was a French nun from the 1800s. As a young teenager, she had a series of visions of the Virgin Mary. And oh. um, yeah, so it, it all led up to the founding of the Shrine of Lourdes. So she's famous. It was a famous saint. So I went and looked this up because I was curious. I mean, I think 15 ever. is a little... I think fifteen is a little uh, young to give yourself to re- to religion and to Christ and all that stuff. I think it's uh, you need a little bit more life experience before you you know make that transition into completely into religion, giving yourself over to God or Jesus or or whatever. Um, oh, those churches start. People... They start around that age. You're kidding me. No. They they usually start around for 13, 14, 15. They start telling kids, like the born again churches, they will start telling kids that they need to do that. Usually, yeah. That is ridiculous. Yeah, I was in a youth group that well, I was like 17 or 18 that uh that did that, yeah. So it was that youth group for about a year. Uh, mostly because my friends were there, but yeah, they were <laughs> they were very aggressive about that. They like my first like I just really? went with yeah, my friends got me to go and they I went to they had like a church service and right after the church service a guy came over to me and just told me he's like, Are you born again? And I was like, I was only born once and <laughs> God, <that's all laughs> <thing. laughs> I didn't know what the heck he was talking about. And he started telling me, you have to give your life up to Jesus and all this stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, they're playing this on heavy. Yeah, I was like, eight, seven, seven, no, I think it was 17. It was 17. I hadn't turned 18 yet because it was like right before I graduated. But they had kids that was like 13 to, it was a youth group. So it was like 13 to, to 18 or 19. It was like teenagers. It was all teenagers. It was like 20 and under. But they didn't have anyone oh, under 13, but, I don't think. Oh, but don't forget, Larice, they've got to indoctrinate them young, though. Yeah, with their that's what I'm content. saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But this is Catholic Church. They, they don't do the whole born-again thing. It's a separate, it's a different thing. They go to confirmation, and um, they have to go to the CCD classes. There's a different, it's different than those. Uh, uh, and I don't know. Evangelical churches. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you'll agree with me here, but I think I understood your opinion on this. I think um, that Leland is trying to get rid of Sister Andrea or Andrea uh, 
I did wrong too. Apologies. Um, because he sees her as his biggest obstacle and threat to his demonic agenda. I agree. Obviously. And he's paying a lot of money, <laughs> too. He's paying through the nose. Yeah. Ma Mary Rose likes the nun. Yes, I love Sister Andrea. So, but oh, the Baba Duke. Oh, Baba Duke. <laughs> John I have, Baba I have, Duke. I have no idea what that is. Oh, you've Sorry, not John. seen the Baba Duke. Oh my God, it's so good. It's kind of silly, but it's it's a little bit scary. It's good. It's good. Yeah, the Baba Duke. I'll have to look it up and see where I can stream. It. Yes, it's a movie. It's good. <laughs> I don't I don't <laughs> recommend watching it alone. Watch it with somebody because it is a little scary. But uh yeah, the pop-up book, yeah, the, the movie, the, the illustrations in that are pretty cool. So the sacrament of confirmation occurs in the Catholic Church in the mid-teens. That's what I thought you go, you have to be you have your first communion. There's all this stuff. You have your first communion when you're pretty young, I think, and then you have your confirmation. You have to go to all the classes first, and then you get your comfort, and then there's a celebration for both. Yeah. It's a lot of different first this, first that. But in order to, to be confirmed, you have to complete these classes in the Catholic religion. Uh, but I guess at that point, maybe she wanted to be a nun because she was playing these chords. And did we hear Dr. Bog singing and playing piano before? I can't, I'm trying to remember. No, did we see him we playing the piano? Am I imagining this in my head? Because, like, if he doesn't play piano, that's a pretty big grand piano he has in his place. So... I think he was trying to see if he saw something because he right. played the exact same notes that she did. So he plays piano. That's good to know. And I actually want to see more of that because we never knew that before now. No, because you don't have a human... I mean, that's not even a baby grand. That's a real grand. So you don't have a grand piano in your place unless you play it. Unless you're just having it there for... It takes up way too much room just to have it there for show. Yeah. You have to have a purpose. And it makes a lot... It's loud. It's going to be loud in there. So I, I was surprised. I said, well, oh, you, oh, would, you would honestly have to have some kind of like sound soundproofing material on the wall, like some kind of foam, uh, if you're going to play that um, piano in a house. Well, it depends on your neighbors. If they're not too far away, they might might not mind it. But if uh, if they're close, you're gonna hear that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I just thought it was was interesting. A little little Easter egg there about him. Not an Easter egg, little nugget. Um, that he, he plays the piano when he was able to play the chords. So then we cut back to Kristen at home, and these contractors are working on the house. The girls come in. They're they're chatty, and then Cheryl comes in. We we didn't see a lot of her in this episode. And Kristen asked her about the the new job. And she says she's proud of her starting a new career. Little does she know what she's actually doing. <laughs> and um, she asks about the girls, like, if they said anything about the man that came to the house. Like, did they say anything to Cheryl about the guy coming to the house? I think that if that guy causes issues again, I think Cheryl might track him down because if the one thing, the one thing that Cheryl has always been protective of is Kristen and the girls. Yeah. Yeah. And so she's threatened Leland's, she's threatened Leland's um, appendage uh, for. Yes. Um, she said she would cut it off. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, that's actually the quickest way to kill him if you if you want to do that. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't quite sure what she was getting at with being independent and ask about uh, how I she was with boys. <clears throat> I think she was struggling with the whole uh encounter with the guy at the door and mm -hmm. trying to figure out the best path forward to tell her girls between right and wrong because she said the reason she apologized semi apologized she said was because she didn't want them to think that uh violence was okay right but she also at the same time wanted them to stand up for themselves as women you know right exactly yeah 
Well, uh, the next scene we have uh, Ben, he brought the recording to his sister and she mentions that these are like shortwave radio wave frequencies and a collision of shortwave frequencies. This is tech talk that I'm not quite, sh I don't quite understand, but he played the audio of it saying his name. Because remember, it did say Ben, and and she says it's it's a coincidence. And that's when he asked if someone could have hacked it. Someone could have hacked into his phone and manipulate the radio frequencies. And she said the person mm. had to have been close to do it. I mean, maybe they were. Was it because the the drone was close, or was it because they were driving near See, where that garage was? Whenever I'm away from home. Um, and of course I'll address that point, um, that you just made in a second, but this goes to, uh, the hacking of Ben's phone. Whenever I'm away from home and I'm not near, you know, any of my other devices or my Wi-Fi or whatever, I'll turn off the important stuff and then I'll lock down my phone to where you have to put a passcode in if you want to do anything to it at all. So like people can't get into it from the outside and like, like I'm just like I'm just thinking about the security of my physical being the physical being of my devices as well right uh, and as far as the um, Ben I think that what he was saying might have been a bit of a stretch um, well I did think that until I saw the scene David later and he um the guy kind of like honed in on David's phone. Hang on, was it? keep talking. Hang on one second. I'm going to roll over and open this door because those fireworks are going off still. And I think the cats okay, want to no get problem. in. Oh, I'm coming back. The cats okay, it's all right. Um, but guys, I was thinking that um, Ben's, Ben might have been right uh, when he said somebody could have hacked it. But, okay, I'm back. Okay, this is like his, what, second or third time having some monster hijack his phone? Like, come on, man. You gotta, yeah. uh, you gotta do something better. I mean... Yeah, the, and the he's monster, the tech guy, so you'd think he'd yeah. want to be on exactly. top of that. Exactly. These like, are deep. I'm always self-conscious about my stuff, you know? This, I, 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 it's crazy. It's been like fireworks nonstop. It's not... It's not, it's people in the neighborhood, just, you know, it's like locals. It's like constantly going off. Oh, and I, I have to say, Larissa, I really am enjoying your hair. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's a wonderful you know, hairstyle actually, you got going on. I'm having a good hair day. I'm having a good hair day, which is very rare. <laughs> <laughs> it's very rare. So what do we have? Uh, so you're thinking maybe it's a little bit of a stretch here. But who knows? Yeah, because there's no way to really tell, to be honest. Like, like um, whenever you make a transfer from your bank um, or from a service like Cash App or something else, uh, your device always leaves some sort of imprint to let you know that you use the device for this transfer. So maybe you could find some evidence of somebody hacking your device but only after the hack is done. Right. Well, uh, this is the next scene. Dave, I thought, gosh, I thought, oh no, David's going to get a visit from the Christian sex team. <laughs> when I saw David waking up, I said, oh no, please, I don't want any more Christian sex demon. <laughs> but he was actually <laughs> getting a phone call uh, from the woman, once again calling, saying that the same thing has happened um not the same things happen but but the the husband is she's frantically saying her husband has took off with his truck and he's called and he's terrified he thinks he hit something in the road but he didn't see actually what he hit and i think he asked her why didn't she call the cops and she said they would have arrested him cuz you know he could have hurt or hit a person or he, they might think he's drugged or something i'm not quite sure but exactly um yeah I... and that I have to insert a point here really quick. Excuse me, Larry. Go ahead. Um, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you. Um, I think that, well, I don't know why he left the house 
in right. Uh, because he seems fine when David caught up to him. So what was that about, do you think? I don't know. It's a little bit unclear. It's a little bit unclear. There are a couple loose ends here. Definitely. And David went out so fast and yeah. went right back. He didn't what? even call Kristen or Ben, I guess, because it was the middle of the night. But and he, he considered this was like an emergency. He wanted to worried about he was worried about the husband, Jason. His name was his, his mental state or whatever was happening and it's um, it seemed like i don't i don't know your opinion on this part but i'm looking forward to hearing it um it seemed like something hit david when he was driving the car like punched him or slapped him or something uh and well, caused the car to like veer off a little bit so the same thing happened as before the radio changed to that and you see, I started to think like when they showed like a close up of him in the rear view mirror. Yeah, he looked back and that's not something you do. See that all of a no. sudden there's something there. That is, I think that's a dog or a wolf, some type of canine creature, right? But it also kind of looks like a stuffed animal, but that just might be the prop department making it look like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> right? Um that's whatever yeah, he did. I, do, I don't See, know. Goes, like because it kind of it dropped down I, and then and then it goes up, right? Oh yeah, I see, I see. Okay, yeah, I see it there. Yeah. Because I didn't see it in the other screenshot. So it could have been someone threw something at it. Someone threw something at his car. That guy Probably. or someone. It, it, no, looked it like almost a looks like animal. a it, it almost looks like a, a goat of some kind. Oh, I did not a, notice this, and I watched this four times. I fr I froze it and I took screenshots, and it was when he turned back. Something oh, okay. was just basically dropped on top of us because it goes up. No, that doesn't make any. It just goes up. What? It's very well, bizarre. This, yes, it is. Yes. Um, like, what is I that? I don't know. Exactly. I don't yeah. know exactly what to make of that. Yeah, it went way up. It went out. It didn't go to the side or out. It went up. Did he hit a coyote and the demon? That's what I thought. He Whatever he hit is the, he pulled over and whatever he hit, the demon was eating it. Yes. So it, what it might have been a coyote or something. I don't know how much of this is the frequency hallucination or did this really happen what the heck is going on when i saw um, this shot that is that remember that is the demon that uh that david saw in the school uh uh the college excuse me uh when they were doing the cannibal episode and so it seems like that's his own personal demon so he has that demon and then he has the Kristen sex demon with his mom person <laughs> this one isn't as pretty as the Kristen sex team and I gotta get I gotta say this one is not nearly as attractive I mean this guy no, when I, I saw I his... prefer... <laughs> go ahead no I, when I saw his, the shot from the back I thought oh god there's horns yikes that is not a nice uh, look I'm, well it's a good thing that I... one's not the sex demon I honestly prefer the sex demon with the uh, very lacy uh, panties. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like a coyote or some type of dog or something. I don't know. Oh, darn it. Now we're back to there again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. They showed it this shot. It, it was, it was, scary. no, don't worry about it. I thought this was really scary though, because they they didn't show it from the front. They showed it behind from behind, just the back of his head with the horns. I said, "Oh God!" And he dropped his keys onto the ground, and he's afraid to even take his eyes off of it. Because when he goes reaches down to get his keys, he's keeping his eyes on it. Because if he turns away, he's afraid this thing's gonna bite him. Yeah, that's right. So he reached down with his hand while he, he kept eye contact with this thing. Yeah, definitely not. Well, um, 
as we can see, that um, that demon has like one effed up eye, and then the other one is like wide open, right there in yeah. the pods. Yeah, um, that it's good. That it's very good. That's not the sex demon. He's eating something. Whatever he hit, I guess. That doesn't even look like a wolf or a dog or anything that I <laughs> recognize. Something furry. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder if the. I wonder if all this is all visual effect, or if this is actually a person in a demon suit. I think at this point it might be, but then later on. I'll show you some of the screenshots that I took. It looks more like a CGI or, or an animated image. Yeah, when the chasing, that part looks animated. Like they use some type of CGI animation. I thought it was really... Yeah, because it's coming up behind him here. So yep. that was probably put in. Um, Post... Not yeah, 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 post, yeah. Uh, but yeah. what I was really disappointed by in this scene, right there, yeah, like, that's I was different, or that could have been, even been like a smaller puppet type thing, too. Mm, what were you gonna say mm -hmm. about being disappointed? I am disappointed by the hole that opened up to the angel. Sorry, <laughs> what's, what's going on over here? What's I keep hitting on? the wrong right button. Over there? Yeah, go ahead, okay. go ahead. Uh, but the the hole that opened up to the angel with the sword and the shield, which, by the way, I loved. But I thought that they skimped on the budget a little bit with that shot. Like, yeah. They made that better. I mean, we're talking about a network, a streaming service that has spent multi-millions of dollars on an AR wall for their other sci-fi shows. And they can't they can't use the same technology for this show. I mean, come on! That did did you get a did you get a screenshot of that of that hole? I did. We're getting there. John said this is not what you see in a dark, lonely highway. <laughs> well, if people saw the Mothman, that that looks a lot like the Mothman. Although I have not had any experience, thank God, with Mothman, and I hope I do not. That flying thing. That's definitely yeah. So this part looks more like completely computer generated not an actual person this, this was this was very stupid right here like, okay you didn't they like this a whole, you didn't like they the could have done a whole lot better. no like look at it come there. on though yeah <laughs> yeah i mean come on like they spend millions of dollars multi millions of dollars sometimes billions of dollars on their star trek content but they can't puff out a a million or two on their special effects for this show. I mean, come on now. I'm this, this is there's just your hole. really pathetic. There's your hole. <laughs> Larice, you need to expand oh. that hole. See, at this point, that that demon is definitely like a computer generated. That's all computer. I I think I don't know. I might be wrong, but that's my analysis. <laughs> Cause, because look how small no it is. There's no way they filmed that on an AR wall because it would look so much better uh, yeah. than it, that. And I, I'm very disappointed in that. I mean, given that this show moved to streaming so that they could have more creative freedom. And then we get this? Like, what? what is this? <laughs> <laughs> it was a painting in the sky. It's a painting in the sky. It slowly opens up and like... Uh, with the That's slit, it. and I'm like, what is this? What is this? It's a painting in the sky. It's an angel with a shield and a sword. Yeah. I thought Not, that was Saint um, Bernadette. Robert and Michelle King, do better. God, do better, please. Well, <laughs> just... They're at the mercy of their budget. This was within their budget, you know? What are you going to do? <laughs> you got to work with what you got. I think part of the show yeah, sometimes but... make it makes it uh, campy and hokey on purpose, though. I feel like that's why. Oh, oh, it could have been like to match the Bible pictures. Yes, that's what I was thinking, and then it turns mm. into a truck. And so, I've only just to be open and everything. I've only read the Bible once in my life, 
So I, I don't intend to read it again. I've read every single text of every religion that there. Uh, that is why I'm atheist. <laughs> I so my question was was the whole thing was he being affected by this frequency? Was he being messed with by this guy in the garage? Was he hallucinating? Did he hallucinate that whole thing, that whole episode? Because he goes back and he talks to Sister Andrea and she tells him that this angel is watching over him and this is a good thing. He doesn't seem convinced. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, I think he is having regret in this scene of becoming priest um, because she tells him that things are after him all the time and I think he's just having doubts. Well, he also confesses to her that he's given into temptation of flesh and they showed a quick flash of him and his sex demon and uh, she says that's <laughs> why God well, why God is helping him out. And he asks her, she didn't answer it, I don't think. He asks her, how, how does she know that it's God and not something else or just your mind itself? And then there were, that's right, she you didn't answer. Know. There was a knock on the door and it's Dr. Boggs. That's right. Oh, now we're back at the beginning. I don't know why I'm doing this. This keeps happening. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Take your time. It's but okay. I'm sure the that I don't need to see this thing again. Anyway. No, this thing is ugly. <laughs> yeah, but that was uh, Doctor Boggs is at the at the door, and Sister Andrea explains that she has a, a psychiatric session with him again. And I have to say, now that David knows that she's in danger there at the church. I love how he later steps up for her. Yeah. And he, he's protecting her and coming to her aid. And I'm like, yes, give me some David strength here. I'm like, yes, the, the book of oh. David. We had really? this quick. Sorry to interrupt. We had this quick little flash cut oh, away. No, it, it wasn't that it wasn't that you interrupted i was i was done but uh then that popped up on my screen and then i got kind of excited <laughs> that's the snake demon that tongue with the two two little things splitting apart yikes yeah the snake tongue yee creepy Ew! oh gross come on larice <laughs> come on that's like a snake is going to eat his ear. But he was thinking about that. Mm -hmm. That's know. always going to be, it's going to be eating away at him for the rest of his life. I think, you know, what if we actually had followed through with our temptation? I mean, he, come on. He, he already go ahead. No, he needs to have that thing exercised because that thing isn't going to go away. He already slept with his uh, dead girlfriend's sister. <laughs> yeah, but that was before he was he became a priest. He wasn't a priest yet. This was after. And of course, this is all a demon encounter. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that demon, if it comes back, it needs to be exercised because it's going to keep bothering him. Hopefully, they'll be able to wrap it up in the next six episodes because... Uh, we don't have a lot of time left, but then we cut to they, Kristen. They have to do something, I would think. Yeah, Kristen is zooming with your favorite person, Andy. Oh God, they just need to kill him already. <laughs> he asks about and, the girls, and she mentions to him about the guy that came to the house, and you know how she semi apologized, and he left, and she isn't sure if it was the right thing to do, and then he says, "Oh, you're breaking up," and disappears. So. Um, and I thought, you know, what would have been satisfying for me, and I, I think that you're right, that his death is going to happen off camera, and I'm really, really mad about it because I want to see him die. <laughs> but If he dies at I, all. He will. He will. I have oh, hope that he I will. Know. I'm not convinced. 
I'm do not, not take this away from me. Last Louise. season, last season, I was convinced, but there, this show has become unpredictable. I never know what to expect, so uh, I'm not convinced. I, yes, um, I will answer John W's question in just a second, right after I make this comment. I thought somebody was going to come up behind him and stab him or slit his throat. <laughs> and I was like, yes, they're, <laughs> they're going to do it thinking. on camera. <laughs> Um, that was wishful but thinking. John, John W., uh, will there be a season four? Yes, there is going to be a season four. Uh, I, I have heard rumblings that it's already been approved at Paramount Plus, but it hasn't been officially announced yet. So uh, just Yay. wait for the official announcement. Yes, Good. yes. Um, I Andy. have my. I, no, no, not more Andy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hopefully he'll be gone. Nah. We'll see. <laughs> Don't take this away from me. Well, there was <laughs> something in this scene I wanted to mention. Uh, Kristen said the girls start out independent and then they lose that around puberty to boys. They lose their independence. And she doesn't want that to happen. Do you believe that? Yeah, I do, actually. Although I think they might not, they might lose that fairly early, sooner than that, sooner, sooner than puberty. I'd say maybe first or second grade. I yeah. Why do you believe that happens? That's what my experience. Because boy, boys are dumb. They're actually, I feel like it, you become a little bit more independent around that age instead. Because because boys are really can be really dumb around like nine, ten, eleven. And then by the time 12, maybe 13 or 14, they stop acting dumb because they're interested in girls all of a sudden. <laughs> so I have to say that in my earlier years, I, I'm not proud of, uh, of my earlier years. I I'm, I'm, was quite stupid back then. Um, I, I would like to think that I've improved intellectually since then. Um, I hope but, I would hope so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope I've improved too. <laughs> Um, then, but I've never, I've never heard that study yeah, to where, you, is sorry. everything all right? Yeah, I heard a noise in the hallway. Okay. Uh, well, I, I never heard that study where, you know, girls do more to boys around 13, 14. And I was like, well, that kind of robs them of their individuality. I mean, doesn't it? Yeah. If that theory is correct. And then... We have her waking up in the middle of the night, and she go she ends up googling her own video, the video of, of her hitting. I guess a couple people thought this was weird or something off about this. Um, this independent girl power. Um, I don't. I, mean, I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything wrong with it. Yeah, they, she went, she looked at her, up her video and then like it came up suggested was the Beyonce video. Well, it was a fan video about Beyonce for Sasha Fierce album and the Sasha Fierce character. character. And that kind of planted the seed. The next morning she's looking like this. <laughs> this next morning she's like, I am Sasha Fierce. <laughs> oh my god! And she, she had a, a very quick personality change there. Yeah, well, she watched the video and she said, "Yeah, that makes sense." They will give her. Uh, uh, I, oh, sorry, I, I don't know if, what John said. Oh, okay. Uh, go ahead and read John's they comment will, for a second. They will give her husband the empty man treatment. What? Is, what is? What is the empty man treatment? I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what it is either. Empty man treatment. Um. What were you going to say? Um, oh yes, uh, I was going to. I was going to say that she jumped into this "I am Sasha Fierce" thing <laughs> way too quickly. But I love her delivery with this douchebag uh, contractor here. Like it I was, love it this was scene. powerful. I yes. love this scene, especially for girls to see her being powerful as their mother. I really thought that that was. Uh, 
that really spoke to them in a way that they don't normally see nowadays. You know, they don't normally see women confronting men uh, as they should and putting putting us in our places because really we we do need to be taught a lesson sometimes when we are dicks. Um, and this guy was a total dick. He just kept saying, where's your husband? Where's your husband? Like she couldn't handle it. Like she wasn't the one making the calls. And she was offended by this. And she also felt like she needed to redeem herself <clears throat> because Lexi kind of lost respect for her, for her when she heard that she apologized to this guy that she punched. They liked that she punched the guy. They were hiking her on. So they were disappointed that she apologized. So she wanted to redeem herself. And she did it without hurting him, at least. She was violent. I don't know how... Uh, this I'm not quite sure how I feel about this. I guess I guess uh, it's asserting herself, but it seems I mean, slightly we, slightly unhinged because you're you're destroying property. So, but it's it's but it's property that she, you know, he's doing a job for her on her property. So she's completely within her rights to do what she's doing because this is the job that she was going to pay him for. So it's not like okay. she's destroying property, you know, that he individually owns. Yeah. She just, oh, darn it. Why would you do that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. We're back to no David worries. going into that horrible place. Yeah, there we have Kristen. She starts hitting things because this he wants a second check. And, uh, I th I think that he was I think that he was trying to take advantage of her because she was a woman. Uh, I think going true. all the doing all the stuff the whole uh, I talked to your husband when he knew damn well uh, he did not talk to her husband. So I think that this right. was the correct reaction because honestly, for me, um, my dad gave me a very wise piece of advice he said when you marry defer to the defer to your wife like just say yes dear <laughs> and move on happy wife happy life <laughs> so exactly so i'm happy she did this i'm happy she asserted herself because andy is a yes man he he just says yes to whatever Kristen wants when he's not bitching about how he, she raises the girls <laughs> <laughs> When he's not whining. So John said, Empty Man movie. Uh, okay, all right. I have heard of this. I may have even watched it or parts of it. Starts out with the characters getting lost in the mountains. Oh, would love to see us cover it. Yeah, we'll check it out. I feel like, is it based on a true story? Because there's some people the that have Empty gone on. movie? Yeah, there have been people. There have been a couple stories of people that have disappeared in mountains. I know there was like a mountain out in Russia. There was a group that went out in Russia. They disappeared. There was like a big I mean, mystery. a lot of people disappear in Russia. So <laughs> yeah, this was a specific group though that was researching something. I can't remember what it was, but it was oh, it's like a big mystery where they went. Maybe they, I think they actually did find them eventually, but they don't know what happened to them, and they suspect it had something to do with aliens. Um. All right, so this guy, aliens. whatever she demol she starts she starts demolishing this place, and he agrees to continue the work. And then she tells uh, Lynn, I need you to watch your sister tonight. Mama's going to hunt a demon on the ghost highway. I love that line. <laughs> that was a great line. And I, I love the way Mama's she dressed. Uh, I love the way she dressed for this scene. Uh, it it was very confident and powerful. And it, it was just, it was not only <laughs> within the, it was not only within the character of Kristen. Uh, that it fit, but it also fit Katya as well. Like, it didn't yeah. feel weird with her. Yeah. Yeah, it was played out really nicely. I liked, I liked the, everything about that. I thought you asked me before we started what was my favorite scene. I said, I like this, and I like David's encounter with that creepy demon when he was getting chased. But only when he was getting chased, not when he, not when he saw the butterfly in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Butterfly in the sky. I saw a little painting. I don't know. Whatever that was. <laughs> Not a true story. It was a weird intellectual horror. Okay. I will 
actual horror is. I will look up that movie. Um, Christy goes up to meet up with Ben, and she's insisting on driving. Yes, I'm driving the car now. <laughs> um, she's in badass mode. John I don't w. Know what else to say? John W. says I suspect that Andy will get lost in the mountains so they can bring him back if they want. No, 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 oh, no, okay. John. <laughs> no, they. They don't need to bring him back. They need to kill him. Okay. All right. We're moving on for that. Cause, cause we go on that. We go, he goes on. Uh, 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 you get him started on this tangent. He's not going to stop talking about it. He will go on and on and on <laughs> every week about how much he wants Andy to die. So don't just don't encourage this. Okay. You're enabling him right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Larice Lur knows me best. She really does. But just we're gonna avoid that subject for a few minutes at least. Uh, I I just love the look on Ben and David's face when she took the keys. It was like I'm driving. <laughs> it was like they're like <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and then they go in the car and what? So this starts to happen. So does he have like a special did he bring special equipment to try and like debug all of this? Oh, I got people in my uh, house making he did. All right. But um, Go ahead. that I looked it I looked it up and that software is like that software is incredibly expensive. Like it's not the type of software for some random schmuck just to buy. I mean you like that's company grade software right there. Okay. Well, they're able to figure out what's going on with this frequency. And this is, that is the ghost frequency. They're able to determine through whatever they, whatever this equipment is, this is the dominant frequency. And that 18.9 HC, if you look that up, you do a search for it on YouTube, you can hear the sound. And I think Ben said that was it. And he explains that this you know he has this equipment he says it's the ghost frequency and now so if you see uh 18.9 it will say the ghost frequency so this is a real thing and you can hear it you can't hear it but it can cause anxiety i could hear it if you put headphones on you can hear it it causing anxiety hallucinations and it's also used in horror movies to make people feel uneasy i didn't know that I also looked up the uh, best frequency, which is 432. It's considered the best frequency. It's known as Verdi's A. Yeah, it's, it's known as Verdi's A. It's like a pure mathematical tone. It's considered a superior tuning that makes music easier to listen to and more enjoyable because it's consistent with patterns of the universe. Allegedly. I don't know for sure, but that's what, based on when I looked it up. I got off like I, I, wanna, uh, I always want to check if these are real things because usually they they base these sh the show on like the bot flies are a real thing and I, I I was very disappointed when I found that out. Some things see, are very you honestly. <laughs> you honestly ahead. did more research. You did more research on the frequency than I did because I didn't even bother to look up and see if it was real. Uh, when I, because I was like, wait a minute, that can't be real. So I was like, uh, no way. Yeah. Well, I noticed they have a pattern of using real, <clears throat> real world, real events and real world. They integrate real world, uh, whatever you might want to call them, <laughs> incidents. Anomalies. Or, yeah. Yeah. Real world or not. That's the word I'm looking for. I'm searching for the right word. That's mm -hmm. perfect. Into the stories. And yeah, these patterns are consistent with the universe. So you can have that frequency on. And David, when he said that it can cause hallucinations, there was a moment David made a face because it cut to David. We had a tight shot in his face when he said that, oh, well, maybe that's what happened. Did that happen to me when I came out here and got chased by this creature? Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's a David face. He had an aha, moment. and I noticed that he never, he never told them about what happened. Never. No, no, no. Of course he didn't. There's a lot of stuff. Remember, David's keeping a lot of secrets right now because he's working for the friends of the Vatican, and they have no idea. But this and drone I, I is. Think, 
Go ahead. I think that working for the Friends of the Vatican or being a friend of the Vatican will will help David in the long run because they, they'll protect him from a bunch of crap that happens to probably Kristen and Ben. I don't know. So he'll be shil- he'll be shielded from it, you know. We're we're gonna find out. But they slow down and they said the, the drone is actually making a U-turn. They're actually tracking this drone and she turns the car and it's like super giddy, super excited. <laughs> like, woo <laughs> it was funny. And they try to follow it, but then she goes off the road, or it goes off the road. Yeah. She does, uh, Katja does know, you know, what she needs in each scene. It's (laughs) almost amazing. Yeah, it's almost amazing because it's like she is always on point with her facial expressions and her acting is just magnificent. I'm like, oh my God, I love her as an actress. Yeah. Yeah. She's very she's really good. Um I love, and before I love the, the show. I love the gettiness. It must be fun to play that that element of Kristen when Kristen Before the show, I never I never even knew about her. Like I find myself googling uh her earlier career because I want to watch other stuff she's been in, you know. Yeah. Well, her background is actually in improv, which is what I do, which I thought was cool. And, Did you uh, hear the story about how she stabbed somebody with an actual yep. knife during a yep. show? Yeah, oh she was on a God. talk show. I thought that was funny. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I'm so glad we don't use knives in our shows. <laughs> and she's like, oh, the guy's cool about it. And he says hey to me every time he sees me. And I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, that, that's nice of him. If I stab somebody, I don't think they'd ever talk to me again. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool though. Um yeah, I, I just like I like Kristen's giddiness here, her her independence, her girl power, whatever you want to know, whatever you want to call it. She's very confident. She's she's Sasha Fierce now. So they get out. She's no longer scared of this thing, obviously, because before she was kind of frightened. And they go and they find this. I, I really like how they film this it's very well shot i like the lighting and um like just the cinematography of this i thought it was really I well agree. yeah it's very i like the aesthetic i don't know if you want to call it that or not they go in they find this truck and it's it's like a it's like a moving radio signal this guy's got all this equipment they, there I know you go. I'm a, i know i'm a i know i'm a nerd and I know I like all things science fiction and techie and everything. I would not go to that length. Like, if I went to that length, I would probably get help from a therapist. Yeah, we don't know his full motivation behind doing all this other than he's just a giant troll. But he did have a gun, <laughs> which didn't even uh, alarm yeah. them. They saw it and they didn't even <clears throat> stop and go, oh, this guy might shoot because- us. You know, but it's not on his person. It's like far away from him. And so when he came into the room in the next shot, he wa- they already knew that he wasn't armed or they suspected that he wasn't armed because well, his that gun could have just been there. one of his guns. He might have others. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess, but the guy didn't really seem threatening at all to me. Like, when somebody's threatening your property and tearing it up like Kristen did in the next shot, um, if he had a gun, I think he would have pulled it at that second. Uh, right. She started, you know, tearing up his shit. Right. Well, the car was warm, and they found their guy. And this, like I said, the Scooby Doo moment. The guy, <laughs> this guy. She saw that that sigil right there when they they pulled down the back of the truck, the pickup truck. And then she just goes and starts demolishing the the equipment. She's just, yeah, she's just in a, you know what Kristen needs? She needs one of those what? rage rooms. She needs, oh, the, oh their reaction yeah. is priceless. They're like, oh, Billy and Ben. <laughs> she needs a crash room. She needs to go in one of those rage rooms where, you, you know, you paid for a half hour and you just break crap. <laughs> That's what she wants. Oh, I would love to. I would love to do that, but I would be scared that I would actually break my own like 
equipment in the process of like yeah d- demolishing I, that stuff they give you stuff to break because i went and looked it up i was just curious they give you like old game system printers computers stuff like that old <laughs> monitors i'm like that's kind of weird i don't know um but but what i want to take monitor with me what you want to take the monitor with you instead of breaking it <laughs> yeah yeah I don't know. I don't know if the equipment is actually functional, although this guy's, I'm pretty sure his is. And she's kicking things. She's just having a grand old. She's like, oh, great, I have an opportunity to hit things again. And she, I have to say that she was super sexy in this scene. <laughs> I agree. This guy comes in, he's like, oh, man, dude, what are you doing with my stuff? Like, oh, I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids. <laughs> really, a, oh really, this is a Scooby Doo moment. <laughs> Come on, this guy has been the whole time messing with these truckers. My question is, why? Just out of for shits and giggles, or what? I mean, why was- you know, people, people, people in this world are monstrous, Reese, especially nowadays, as you know. So like- I think that people. People just do stuff for shits and giggles just to make other people suffer. I mean, it's a wide, you know, people love doing that now. Um, oh, sorry, I was reading the comments. I don't think there was anything new on that. He just seems kind of like, I don't know. I feel like he is like, well, if you wanted me to just stop doing it, you could have just told me to. He didn't really fight with them. He's like, I don't want, I don't want to get in an argument here. That didn't sound like the man that runs an evil house. Right. No, it didn't. He's just a, a bored guy that was like, he's just a big troll. I don't know. And then he tells him she can break the stuff, but he'll just buy new, new more, new stuff, new equipment. Well, okay, somebody's funding him, or where, where's he getting all this money from? But I, I don't. These things cost money. I'd be mad if people were were breaking my equipment because that's expensive. The I mean, Leland is, and the other Leland and the other sigil holders probably buy him that shit so that he can annoy the hell out of people. That's true. Well, they go back to their car. Kristen is like a giddy once again, and they pull away. And that's when I got really confused because I saw this other car there, and I was thinking, "Oh my mm-hmm. gosh, what is this other car?" Didn't they just pull away? And that, I didn't see it coming. I did not see it. Did you see this coming? Uh, no, I did not see it coming. Uh, this was uh, this was not anything that I expected. Uh, but I was, I knew automatically what was going to happen. I was like, yeah, we're going to get them. Like, this show is called Evil. They need to start killing some people. Yeah. And so... I, I don't know if you agree with me on that, but they need to start killing people. <laughs> the the friends of the Vatican? Uh, I mean, like, if they expect to get rid or eradicate this evil, the only way to do that would be to kill the successors of these houses. That's what they're doing. He says wipe it down for Prince. I'm pretty sure the guy was ha- didn't have any intention of shooting himself no but it's very easy to like if somebody has a gun it it, if you're well trained it's very easy to turn that gun on someone else and make it look like they shot themselves well that's why he had to wipe it down for prince Mm -hmm. but that did catch me off guard and then the next scene um we have Sister Andrea and David talking. And, you know... Father David. Woo! Father David. Yeah, father. Yes, father, <laughs> father David. And, you know, Leland comes in again. It's like it's like Sister Andrea, the three-piece, and Leland. He, it's pretty obvious who's behind all of this. This is all Leland's doing. And they try to get David to leave, and he refuses. He says, no, I'm, I'm going to stay, which I thought was awesome, like you said. And he, you know, he protects her. And I'm like, I love that because she would do the same for him. 
Yeah. Well, he's just like, what? what is going on here? And then, like I said, Dr. Boggs comes in and confirms that she's admitted to seeing a demon whispering to the Cardinal at a midnight mass. And that's when she boops him on the nose before he leaves. So did he, did she tell him this? Uh, I think she did because if she hadn't, uh, there would have been a better, a more explosive reaction from her, I think, other than just being in the nose. Um, yeah, she must yeah, have, because I, I think she, she would have protested and said, I did not say that if she hadn't. And the boot Excuse was me funny. for a second. I have to. I have to go over here and grab my water. I'll be right back in just a second. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the boop was just. She didn't seem slightly bothered by what what he said. She just did the boop. The boop. <laughs> the boop on the nose. <laughs> the look on and David's. Face is priceless because he saw the boob. David knew it though. <laughs> he knew there, he knew what she, why she did that. Yeah, there was some jargon, some Vatican Catholic jargon they talked about, and I had no clue what they were saying. But uh, ultimately, uh, they came to the consensus that David was going to defend her. I don't know what. Oh yeah, because. Hired. There was some type of interaction between him and the other priests that I couldn't understand what they were saying. I'll <laughs> but, try, can I can I try to take a stab at that real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um I think this is basically gonna be as like some sort of almost like a court proceeding, but with religious rules. Okay, that makes um, sense. And and then they're going to decide if she can, if she is forced to leave or retire, as they say. Um, but I don't think that this um, douche nugget guy, uh, I don't think that he suspected David or even thought of David to defend her because he was like, you'll need a priest for that. And he was like, well, good thing I am one. I think right. that was a little bit, I think that was a little bit racist of the guy, if you ask me. To assume that David couldn't do that. Well, that's possible. He just maybe wasn't expecting. Maybe he just was unaware of their relationship because she's pretty much mentoring David at this point. She's like a spiritual yes. guide almost to him. Mm -hmm. So he probably wasn't aware of that. Wasn't the boop reminding him that what the demon did? Yes, it was. It was. And that demon, we haven't seen the end of him. I, I think I think it will be back. Dr. Boggs has his own little storyline. I think Dr. Boggs has another storyline happening. They, they can't just introduce that and then have it disappear, you know? Especially well, I, after I, I, this. I agree. I agree. But I also think that, um, that them bringing it up is their way of not letting it die. Yeah. Or, well, they could be rehashing and, and touching on it because they're going to, it's like a little bit of foreshadowing as to what to come. What's to come. Mm -hmm. Or they could just drop it because they do drop storylines all the time too. Uh, David goes back to his room and Lacan is sitting there. Lacan just lets himself in these places. Like his room. <laughs> he doesn't know. I mean, it's a good what, thing. If he's, what if he's what if he's in there with the Christian sex demon? I know. That's what I said last time. It's a good thing he kept his clothes on. Uh, <laughs> th thankfully, he just screamed into his pillow, and he went in to scream at his pillow because he was angry about the situation with Sister Andrea because they know what what's going on. But once again, this guy. He's creeping in the corner of your room. Like, what? <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> what the fuck? You go in your room and it's <laughs> like your place. You think you're alone. I would jump if there's somebody there. Oh, hey, it's Lacan. Well, Lacan is back. There's some privacy in those places because you can't lock the doors. Yeah. Um, at, le at least not anymore. I mean, you could before. You know, all the stuff happened. Uh, but you can't now. Yeah. 
it's still it's still a little so, bit startling to have this guy creeping in your room and he's found the sigil yeah, map he's found david okay sigil what map. were you doing what were you doing going through my drawers bro like come on you don't, <laughs> you don't do that don't go through another man's drawers i'm not in your house going through your underwear drawer trying to find out what you're looking at well we don't know where he's his house is this guy's be this guy's very mystery man cryptic so but i agree but he went yeah, there where, I mean, he's been watching david all this whole time he probably knows that he has this and um he tells david he can have the honor of eliminating a demonic family and so the drone operator that's when it's revealed the drone operator was successor to that frequency sig sigil and david says we didn't el eliminate him and that's when he, uh lacan informs him that the drone operator shot himself he in the did. head after they left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shot himself in the head. Oh boy. And that's when he reveals they've been following him ever since he let the medical student cannibal go. Oh boy. This is a lot. David is mad. Oh, yes. At, um, rightfully so. But I also think that this whole friend of the Vatican thing will pay off. Uh, when it comes down to protecting David from the more um, intricacies, the things that we don't see behind the scenes, I think when it um, when it comes down to it, they'll protect him uh, toward for the blowback toward you know some of these uh, spiritual and religious things that happen to Kristen and Ben. I think they'll find a way to shield David from those things. I hope you're right because. If they murdered this guy, David doesn't like what this guy did. He's obviously menacing and a, a dangerous man. He should probably be arrested for what he was doing because if it was causing truck drivers to run off the road, that is lives that could be lost. And he completely but you also disrupting know. these people's lives. <clears throat> this woman or husband that, that's now hallucinating believes he's possessed and driving. If they were messing with him enough... For him to drive eight hours almost to Montreal, uh, that's yeah. He should be arrested for that. I don't know if he deserves well, you, to be killed. Well, well, you know, we never arrest the powerful in America, so I don't think that'll happen. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, uh, that was but a as far as the cannibal, as far as this guy, I would have. As far as the uh, the cannibal guy, I would have handled it differently. I would have probably put him uh, in some sort of place where he can't hurt anybody anymore. Not prison, but like a psychiatric institution. Right. Right. So yeah, that, that could have that, that could have been like that could have been more like. Uh, in essence, that would have been eliminating a demonic house because you eliminated the threat of that man killing someone else or doing whatever else to someone else. Yeah, you could. But then if you put him in a in a psychiatric hospital, it's pretty easy to get somebody out going in and someone like perhaps Leland could pull some strings and then go in and have him released like the next day. Well, this is the sigil either way. For that house and it's still in existence because David let the guy go um, and Lacan denies that they killed him he says that they just disposed of him before he could be cannibalized I don't believe that for a second and neither does David no it's a lie they killed him, they killed him. we know yes, they killed him because um, you can Okay, so Victor LeCon didn't exactly say go murder the guy. He just said wipe the place for Prince. Right. Okay, but that's not saying I want you to go do this. But if you say, hey, something should happen or hey, right. go do. Yeah, it's essentially the same thing in my book. He but said that's... it. He said it, but it was just off screen. I'm pretty sure that, that they're, they, yeah. They murdered the guy. Yo. And, oh, yeah. Definitely. yeah. But they're, they, I guess they got to step up their game. Like we said, that they 
how many years? Like it's six centuries, and they've century. yeah, and this is all they have. What? I guess they're stepping it up, but they got rid of this thing. <laughs> that's that's the drone guy. Yeah. And I don't think a, I don't think a drone guy is enough to affect evil. Because David's, and I don't know why I said evil like that. I'm, I guess I'm on a roll or something. Evil. But, uh, and David said, what happens when we eliminate them all? And he said, peace on earth. But how right. is getting rid of a drone operator promoting peace on earth? Because he was, he was creating all this chaos. He was inflicting all this pain and chaos on these poor truck drivers by causing them to hallucinate and have nightmares in the middle of the night and wake up and sleepwalk and believe they're possessed. And uh, the truck drivers, the waitress said they were running off the road and that's dangerous. So if you're getting people killed yeah. and disrupting their lives, that's pretty destructive. I don't know if he necessarily had to be killed, but he probably should have been arrested. There, that's more that's beyond pranking we don't know what his motivation was i think ben said he was clout chasing but your identity is a secret you can't tell anyone that you're doing this because if you did this then the secret's out and people are going to know it's fake so that's just a weird dilemma there i i don't i don't and what what was what he was doing was not only wrong ethically wrong but very illegal as well because you're putting people that um that are on the road, not just truckers, but you're putting people who are like Kristen and Ben and David in danger. Right. Yeah, all these all these sigils. <laughs> that's pretty sad. Yeah, it's not just that, it's everyone. But that's where the episode ends. And his goal is peace on earth. Good luck with that. I'm actually <laughs> I'm actually glad that they drop one a week because if they didn't, you and I would uh, would have our work cut out for us on these recaps here. Drop one? Oh, you mean? I'm yeah. I'm actually glad that they drop one a week because if they didn't, we'd have our work cut out for us on these recaps here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I don't think they're going to. This isn't going to. For me, this does not seem like the solution. To, this isn't going to create peace on Earth. Oh, you don't think that murdering the the, the heads of the houses will do uh, what they suspected will? No, you're not supposed to be murdering anyone. I mean, yeah, but I'm not advocating we have, for we have, They're like the vigilantes thing. now. They're like vigil. They're like secret covert vigilantes. We have a, a a justice system. We have you. If you do a crime, you don't. I, the whole thing is is corrupt. Monsters and and you know you and I know what monsters look like. Monsters yeah. often get away with a lot of stuff. Uh, they go for decades and decades doing these terrible things, and they never get held accountable. John says it's war. True. True, they're at war with yeah, these. and yeah, but in war, John, you have to have rules. You can't just go around using whatever weapon or method you you want. The I mean, uh, in let's see, in um, the Geneva Convention, you use mustard gas against your enemy, and you can't attack. You can't attack the medics uh, from the other countries when you're at war with them. Uh, those are, you know, rules and that we have to follow in war. So oh, they can't oh just... we... no, they're not following those rules in the, in Ukraine right now. So yes, I, I yeah, I know they're not. That's... They're attacking the medics. That's they're attacking sad. American reporters, old ladies, yeah. children. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no rules. Yeah, they don't really. They don't really. They're they're. The the Russia the Russian army is not ethically bound by those uh, rules, but uh, most not. countries most countries that go to war uh, do adhere to those uh, strict uh, guidelines. Well, they're definitely not with this war. 
No. These guys are operating in the shadows. Overall, I think it was a good episode. It did leave a few questions unanswered. I think we're not quite sure what other, besides, other than, aside from the fact that he might have been uh, part of this demon entity, part of the 60, potentially, Mm -hmm. Yeah. what what his motivation was but being part of the 60 maybe that was his motivation to inflict pain and suffering among these truckers and their families and anyone else on the road was it the right thing to do potentially but again they're working as vigilantes they're not going through the actual system but you also mentioned not everyone who breaks the law is held accountable because there oh, are yes. different rules. And if you're on the inside, you might be able to sidestep those rules and accountability. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're connected to something as strong as these 60 or whatever, all these different sigils. Yes. I connected. do think that Leland Leland is the most powerful of them all though, because he's the one calling the shots around everything. Here as we see, so I do think that he is the most powerful uh, sigil, um, known as the the pig sigil. I don't know about that, because we've seen him brought to his knees by both Kristen and Cheryl at times. So, and he seems to fall in line with Cheryl now, and Sarah, Cheryl has because her own sigil. Be- Let's be honest, though. Cheryl will cut off his appendage if he doesn't fall in line. So. Right. So, And she also has her own sigil now, although that was the head, and the head is in the toilet. We didn't hear anything from the toilet this week. So it was like the first week there was no toilet trouble. You know, now I've actually started looking in my toilet for things. Oh, really? Like a head? Yes. <laughs> did, you do, did you do like a scuba dive into your toilet? No, but I every time like now, you know, people flush once. Right. When they, they go to the bathroom. I flush twice now. <laughs> now oh, that I've good. seen that. Yes. That's good. It actually helps prevent clogging later on. That's always mm-hmm. a good thing. And Especially plus if I have it's that like... super <laughs> what? Plus I have super... that plus I <laughs> I, no, I have. A, you had a this, super toilet? <laughs> what do you mean? I have the what? super flush toilet. The super flush. The you have super flush? The, uh, the, yeah, the ones with the, the suction flush. Yeah. Oh, oh, I don't. Yeah, I don't have any super flush. Ooh, <laughs> well, I mean, it's a good thing you don't live in the White House because apparently they have low flow toilets. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they're only low flow because people were flushing. Documents down them. Documents. Well, they only flush the documents that he didn't eat. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Or take down to Marilario. Oh, Great episode, guys. I really enjoyed this. Next week, we'll do a deep dive in episode five, and then we'll have uh, we're already halfway through the season. That's very, it's going so fast now. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of disappointed to know that they reduced the episodes, but I know why they did it is to bring them in line with the other original series that they have. So mm-hmm. their other properties have ten episodes a season, but they started out with bigger seasons though when they first came on the air, and they decided, well, you know, in order to also tell more story but to have less filler, let's reduce it down. Right. So I know, like that. It, we don't exactly we don't exactly get as much as we used to but also we don't get less either i mean that might not right. make a lot of sense but no it, we don't need any more zombie filler episodes milk toast so this was great so God, far i've been terrible. really impressed with this season i've been i've been impressed with this season uh john had said no rules in a war between heaven and hell that makes sense um, yes, uh, and thank you I for watching the stream tonight. Yes. Yeah, but other than that, uh, how many, we will see you all. How many, pe- how many people did we have st- uh, streaming with us tonight, by the way? 
Uh, we'll be able to see until we close up, but we have like, you know, between four and nine on at a time. So, awesome. um, yeah, yeah. And if you guys aren't following us on Twitter, our, our handles are down here. Uh, a lot of our stuff, <laughs> we tweet a lot about politics. So, but I tweet, mm-hmm. about, I tweet about my cats too and other just random thoughts. And then if you guys aren't <laughs> in our Facebook group, uh, there's a link in my in the description down below the video uh, to join the Facebook group and chat. I think most of you guys are yes, in we, that group. We're, we're grateful that you came to join us tonight. So uh, we'll see you next week, guys. Yeah, we'll be out next week, same time, same place. And we really should have more followers. Thank you so much. Yeah, spread the word. Tell your friends. Share the video. <laughs> Please, give us a yes. like. And yeah, we like talking with you guys. So it's a lot of fun for us. But we'll, we'll see you guys next week. Mm-hmm. And until then, be safe. Watch your toilet. Don't drive on those scary roads at night. And definitely don't stop <laughs> in an exit 13 in New Jersey. You will deeply, deeply regret it because it smells like the devil, a devil's asshole. <laughs> it's the end of the thing. <laughs> and with that, I bid you a good night. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>